So what are some of the habits then that you learned over the years that the millionaires have that the rest of people don't have? Um, so this is going to sound, this one's going to sound crazy, but this is one that I've, I've, I shouldn't say it sounds crazy. It sounds too simple, mm. but this one has been a, a passion of mine for the last probably two years more than ever last six months, especially I told you before with, with being a dad, you know, you always want to be able to look in the mirror no matter how much money you're making or what you're doing for a living and look at that person and say, are you good with you? Like, mm. are you compromising who you are? Are you, are, are you going against your values to be successful? But you know, you just, you have to have that conversation with the man in the mirror, right? Yeah, absolutely. But when you have kids, it compounds times a thousand. Anybody watching who knows, <laughs> knows exactly what I'm saying. Kids don't do what you say. They do what you do. So you have somebody watching. If I want to be the best dad possible, I want to, I, I need to keep evolving and faster than ever. So I would say a morning routine. This is just one of them. That's been huge in my life mm -hmm. is setting my day up for success. And, and you know, in an interview like this, there's so many different directions we can go, but I, I yeah. want to give some really strong takeaways here is everybody watching we suffer on all different levels of suffering. We, some people suffer on a high level. Some people suffer because is the job going to get done? Is the, is the deal going to come through? Like we have these moments of suffering, no matter if it's five minutes of suffering or an hour of suffering or months of suffering. Right. Some people lose a relationship and they suffer for years. Some mm -hmm. people have a partner, take their money. They suffer for years and they're stuck in that. And if you can limit the time you suffer, the more you can work on the solutions to better your life. People stuck in suffering Absolutely. are stuck forever. And we mm -hmm. know right now I'm saying it and you're thinking of friends that you have that are yeah. stuck. Some they, yeah. they went, 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 found some suffering and they just crippled. Or moments where I was suffering and yeah. I didn't let go of it. You can't let go of it, right? Or and, I held onto it for right. too long and, and it you, hurt me. Right. Yeah. And if you hold on to it, there's not enough energy or focus no. to keep moving forward. You could that's when you still, right? Yeah. So what I've been on this obsession and literally Tony uh, Robbins flew out. Him and I got really close. He flew out and him and I had lunch about nine months ago and he's on the same thing of like eliminating like complete suffering gone like instead of uh -huh. it hours or weeks it's moments that you catch it so morning routines help me more than ever right. and i'll tell you mine um anybody wants to steal this this works for me because i, <laughs> I want to set my days up for least amount of suffering um feeling grateful and ready to you know just rock at the day like nothing mm -hmm. can get me off now Everybody knows gratitude is a key to success, happiness, joy. You can't be grateful and depressed, grateful and sad. You just can't do the two together. But yeah. it's hard sometimes. I feel like the, the road runners before your time. But when I was a kid, remember Beep Beep, the road yeah, runner? Course, there yeah, was yeah. the Tasmanian devil. Yep. So every, most of our lives with Facebook and social media and cell phones, and we're like the Tasmanian devil. There's so much dust around yes. us. It's hard to like see through it, right? right? Like it's like, I just got to get through this storm and then I'll be okay. How do I, you want me to set a goal and be grateful? Like <laughs> right, how do right. I get out of this dust storm, right? Sure. So I just obsessed on how do I start my day to make sure that doesn't happen. So one thing I do is at night, put your, I put my phone on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. And for the last year, especially when I wake up in the morning, I do not check email or texts because I, I can't if I check email or text especially it, in it, bed right it, right and yeah. who and I've done it for years I'm not telling you something I haven't done but I, the great text put me in a good mood bad text I become the or you thermo anxious yeah or you like yeah. if you're like oh you know I should get this done I should just yeah. get this out of the way right and you become the thermometer of life life just grabbed the hold of you and they're going to tell you how your day is going to be right. I don't know if I'm going to adjust you on the heat up the ice cold or stressed mm -hmm. or anxious or so I leave my phone on airplane mode and the first thing I do is I feed my soul right and and that's not this, I'm just being honest. I don't chant. I don't do hours of meditation. What I've done is I've lowered the bar of gratitude. Now, these are habits that you think, oh, this is revolutionary. These are the habits that I look have made me successful, mm -hmm. make me keep going forward, push through the negative times, keep reaching for the next thing. So I, I find gratitude, but I've lowered the bar. And I just said this, but I'll wake up some mornings and be like, damn, these sheets are amazing. <laughs> you know, I mean, 150,000, you can Google it, 150,000 people die every day. Mm -hmm. There's some days I just wake up and go, damn, I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. I'm here. And when you can find gratitude on the lowest level, not I conquered, <clears throat> I did. The, look, I see your wall. You have, you've interviewed such amazing people. You got to be so proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah. I, I look at it. I admire it. That's amazing goals. But sometimes we just set ourselves up until you get the next one of those pictures up there. The rest of the stuff is just mundane. It's not. We're in right. this beautiful world. We're blessed every day. We're learning every moment. Even an interview like this, take, take all the stuff I say, throw most of it away. If you get one thing I say today, it was worth your time with us being mm -hmm. together. Just, just one thing, right? Yeah. So I find a way to be grateful in like the first few moments I wake up by lowering the bar. No big special thing. Or sometimes I'll open a book like I just read The Untethered Soul for the second time. Love that book. I'll yeah. read two sentences out loud and then I feed my body. 
So I immediately get up and I do, I mean, it's just my personal thing, but I do a glass, a full big glass of water with a lemon, a green juice, mm. some essential oils. And I down that because I feel like I'm feeding my body. And then I go move, whether it's workout, run, exercise, and someone isn't working out, I just move. And those three things set me up for a successful day. And then when I get back, mm. this is something I've been doing for a year. And, and, and I'd say rob this because there's things <laughs> that, listen, you're in business. There's things that you love to do. It's your core competency. You were put on this earth to do. It's interviewing. It's meeting people. Right. It's networking. All, whatever you have is meant to be. But there's some things that you do. It's like, I don't want to do that conference call. I don't want to sit with my accountant and go over numbers. Right, just, right. Right, whatever it is, right? And I used to think, man, I have to do that today. And I just switched that in the mornings. I write a quick little list every day of what I get to do. Mm -hmm. I just put the word, what I get to do. When I think about that, I, I, used, to, I used to literally live in a bathroom with my dad and I, in my teens, I worked on cars every day and smoked, you know, smelled fumes. Cause I was mm. like, the, the rooms were always smoky. I was the only one painter in our collision shop right. and I'd have headaches and like, I could be doing that. So I have to do conference calls on Tuesdays and I don't like conference you calls. Get to do Big, conference whip calls. Whip now when I say I get to do <laughs> okay. conference calls, it changes everything. So that little routine, I'm not a victim anymore. I'm not a victim anymore. Right. Yeah. And, and again, on every level it's, yeah. it makes a difference. Mm. I love it. Any other hat or any other thing in the morning that you, you do? That you no, that's it. That's, that's my morning routine. Are there any non-negotiables every day for you besides the routine? No, not really. Yeah. I'm pretty flexible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, there's a part actually that I wanted to go over in your book called okay. the seven levels deep. Is yeah, that what yeah. it is? Yeah. And this is an exercise that you do, yeah. right? And what is this exercise for okay. and how does it go? Okay. So seven levels deep was probably the biggest impact, uh, the biggest thing in the impact of my life ever. Really? Yeah. One one day. So I, I hired a guy named Joe Stump. Do you know Joe Stump? No. Great guy. Uh, he's in the marketing world. But I hired him because I want more engagement with my students. So it's it's all about if you can get somebody to digest some of your book. If somebody will read 30 pages yeah. of your book, they'll read the whole book. But how do you get them to the first 30 pages? So mm -hmm. I'm always obsessing and trying to create ethical bribes, whatever I can <laughs> right, do to right. get you to take action, right? Um, we know books work. It's the books and the action. So I was, always, so uh -huh. anyway, so Joe comes in and he I said, I want to do whatever I can. And he said, have you ever done the seven levels deep? Mm. I don't know where he got it from. This is probably about eight years ago. She was two. So about eight years ago. Um, and I said, well, if it's good, just give it to me. Right, right. I'll take it. I'll <laughs> yeah, take yeah. it. And he's like, I want to go through it with you. I'm like, right, listen. And, and I paid Joe 10 grand for half a day of, of consulting right. at the time. And he's like, I said, I don't want to go through it. I just want it. He goes, I won't give it to you unless you do it. So we sit there. And what the seven levels deep is, is finding everybody wants to know your purpose and what's, what's this meaning of life and what's my why and all that. I get it. And it's kind of played out. Mm. But I don't know if anything really gets to the heart of the, of it as simple as this. So what it basically mm. was, he's like, why would you give me 10 grand for half a day? And I said, because I want to create a company that stands out from everybody else. I want to engage more students, change more lives. And he basically said to me, that's a, that's a really great answer. So I asked you why I'm here. And you said you want to engage more students and, and get more people to change their lives. So why is it important for you to engage more students and change people's lives? And I remember saying, you know, there's a lot of people in this industry that shouldn't be here. And there's some great people. I want right. to help rise all boats of the good and push the rest out. I want to leave a legacy for my kids. So he said, okay, I asked you why you pay me 10 grand. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. And he's like, you did this, you know, you said you wanted to stand out and you wanted to leave a legacy. So why is it important to leave a legacy? And the whole point is asking the previous question seven times. Mm. I took that that day. By the time I got to the third question, what happens is the third, when there was three questions left, I should say, he asked me four times, it switched from my head to my heart. And I felt my physiology change. I felt my emotions change. I felt like tears welling up. And when he asked me, and I don't even remember what the fourth thing I said, but the third thing I said was, I never want to go backwards. Mm. And he got me thinking about things I haven't thought about in years. Wow. I, I didn't like being the kid with hand-me-downs and I'd make my right. parents drop me off down the street with their junky car and I'd go to lunch. And, and this is not a poor me. I, I, my life was designed to be exactly the way it was or I wouldn't be the man or the father I am today but there was days I'd go to school without lunch money and I just tell my buddies I'm not hungry because right. we didn't have a buck right so I never want to go back there and I felt that emotion and it 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 hit me so hard I'm like that's what it is and he's like well there's two more left so he said Dean why is it important that you never go backwards and I'm like God I, I, I don't know and it hit me and I thought my kids I, I I just want to give them options. I don't want to raise entitled kids or brats, but I want to give them options that I didn't have. And I'm like, that's it. So he's like, well, that's not really it. Cause it's seven. It's not nine. It's not five. It's seven <laughs> levels deep. And by now I'm crying. Cause I'm thinking about my kids sure. literally. And I got half my staff there and I'm like just weeping. 
and it came to me, he said, why is that important? And it just hit me. And I never knew why I worked so hard since I was cutting firewood in high school and did all this stuff. I said, I need to be in control of my life. And these emotions flooded in my parents. Everybody's got their thing, right? But for me, and I'm yeah. saying this because I want you at home to be, or when you're watching this, listen to this. I realized that my parents were married nine times when I was a kid. So I moved 20 times by the time I was wow. 19. Different stepbrothers, stepsisters. Both parents were married. Five for my dad. Wow. Five for my mom, four for my oh dad. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. Always moving like military kids know what that feels like, right? Wow. So I'd be in a cul-de-sac with a new stepdad, stepbrother, stepsisters, have the bike, no come way. home one day and my mom's like, we're moving again. And then I move in with my dad, move in with my grandmother. So I had this crazy wow. hopscotch my whole There's childhood. No there was no certainty. So what I realized at that moment, literally I'm bawling loose. I mean like literally crying. It's like, I don't want anybody to ever tell me when to move, how to dress, how to live, how to work, who, how I'm going to raise my kids. It's definitely not going to kiss somebody's ass for money. <laughs> right. Right. And I realized at that moment, my why was I, I don't want to be a control freak. I just want to be in control. When I was 27, I retired both my parents. I stopped worrying about them. Wow. I took care of my grandmother. I take care of some, like, so I got those problems out of the way. And when I anchored that in and you watching at home, it's like, if you think you're watching this because you want to be an entrepreneur, you want, or you already are. If you're watching this, you've already had great success in your life. You want that next level, or maybe it's income, or or better health, or better diet, or better physiology, whatever it is you want. So many times we think it's because I want to get out of that job. I want this freedom. I just want more money. I want to take the better vacations, and it's seven times deeper than that. Hmm. And when you find that, and the reason I know this, not only because it, it wasn't just transformational to me, transformational to me, is I did live events in Las Vegas for six years straight. Every single month, there was 400 people in the room that paid 20 grand to go to- Real estate events, right? Real yeah, estate events. Time, yeah. So about five and a half years, I did them um, every month in Las Vegas. So once a month, I'd fly in, and that was like the highest level. And I, every single month, I'd raise, I'd get- I'd pick somebody out of the audience and I'd say, come on up, let's do the seven levels deep. Like, I got it, man. I know what it is. And I'm like, okay, so like, I'm gonna give you a quick example. I, yeah, I, won't, yeah. I won't beat this up, but this is so important yeah. because when you feel fatigued, when you want to say no, when you don't want to go to the gym, when you don't want to make that sales call, when you don't want to get your funnel working, when you don't want to start new, when you don't want to say no to someone you should say no to or say yes to someone else you should say yes to, literally for me still, I fall back on my why. And when I think of my kids and going backwards and being in control, I could push through anything, nothing will stop me a bad day I don't know what it's like to be sick because my mind I, I can program my brain to just power through because mm. I focus foundationally on this why right, right. so I get I remember this guy he was awesome this big dude he had dreadlocks he was like six foot seven I mean six wow. foot five he was huge this awesome dude he comes up he's like man I like pick me up he gives me this big hug he's like Look. so I said why are you here he's like I already know dude you're not gonna get seven levels on me you're not gonna I've already done the exercise because I'm here because in my neighborhood there's no dads. There's not enough dads in my neighborhood. I grew up without a dad. These kids need dads. So I'm making money in real estate and I'm starting this youth group. I already had dad. We get dads together and we go spend these days. He had, his, he had this amazing story. And I, I mean, I, I melted on the first one. And I said, well, why is that important? He goes, mm -hmm. dude, what do you mean? Why is that important to you? Of course it's important. And he's laughing. He's joking. And he gives me another reason. I want more money because I want to build a building for it. But I could tell he was still in his head. Uh -huh. He gets the number two or one. And his, everything changed on him. He gets small and he starts crying. I mean, like uncontrollable crying. And he gets to his number one. He's like, my mom raised a good boy, but when she died nine years ago, I was a drug addict. Mm. And she never saw the man she created. And she said, I'm showing her in heaven what a man she, I mean, I'm saying it right now. I wow. got physical good. Yeah. He said that. And I said, he said, I'll never stop now. I'll never stop. Mm. And again, we all have our own reasons for doing stuff. But when you get to the heart of why you're watching, why you do what mm. you do, it's so much deeper than what you think. And I forget sometimes. I, I hope I don't sit here and feel like, seem like I got my life all figured out. I've been blessed to have mm. more. Uh, I've had more blessings in my life than I ever could imagine. If somebody would have told me at 25, this is where I'd be, I'd say impossible. It's, it, so I, I appreciate my blessings, but I'm not I'm not perfect at all this stuff, but when I mm. practice these habits, when I think through this, when I recognize my why, the days that I'm off track, the days I think I bit off more than I can chew, or the days where I feel like I plateaued, when I go back to that why, it's like game over. You're not getting in my way. Nothing is. Mm. Mm. Wow. You got me emotional. What is the, uh, I mean, you've achieved so much over the years. You know, you said in the first 18 months, 150 million in sales, you know, and that was 20 years ago. And the things you've created now, 10, yeah, but 10 years ago, yeah, the things yeah. you've created now, you've created so much. You've impacted so many lives. It sounds like you don't need to work or need to keep pushing. Yeah. Um, but why do you, what's the dream and why do you keep going after it? So I think it's three things. So real quick, I think there's three types of entrepreneurs. 
there's an entrepreneur who wants to work under the blanket of someone else, right? They're the company, they're the person that's in a company. You're like, man, that guy, that woman, mm -hmm. she just, she, they want to rise up through the ranks and be an entrepreneur, but kind of with the safety net. And it doesn't make them better or worse than anybody else. That, I mean, without yeah. the implementers the in your life, without the team, yeah, yeah. who would I be without the amazing yeah, yeah. people on my team? Secondly, there's lifestyle entrepreneurs. Like my buddy, Dean Jackson, he's got this, I know I'm being successful when list. This is cool. For anybody who's got a lifestyle entrepreneur, there's just a certain amount of money. He says, I know I'm being successful when I don't, I don't have an alarm clock in my house and it never goes off. I wear <laughs> black t-shirts every day and no one gives a shit. Yeah. Uh, um, I golf, you know, I golf at least five times a week. Correct. I live on a $50,000 a month net income. I live like, what do you say? I live like an artist with a trust fund, except I don't know how to paint. So he's got this, he's, he, so he, he like, he has this list. I he knows it. he's being successful when, and that's, that's lifestyle entrepreneur. And then there's entrepreneurs that just want to keep, that just want to, they're accomplishment based. It has mm -hmm. nothing to do with the money. They thought it was, the, and I think this with me, they thought it was when I get the money and success out of the way, then I could stop worrying. And it's not. It's the next accomplishment. What can you it's do? The this, game. this, it's yeah. It's it's the game, and I think it converts. That's why you see somebody like Richard Branson that that his whole life now is is uh, Virgin Unite. Mm -hmm. You know his charity. I, I spent a couple of weeks with him out in his island because we, me and Joe Polish raised a million bucks yeah. for him. So we got to spend time with him, and, and he started that same process, made all the money, and then now he's still driven. But now it's how many more schools he can build in Africa. Mm -hmm. So it never changes. It just but always have your focus on something. Like you see people who go to you know Warren Buffett his age he's still crushing because he has a bigger purpose we always have to have that so mm. i would say yeah i you know a couple of years ago especially when the kids are young i was thinking of should i just cash out and spend 10 years being a dad but i would i wouldn't be the best me i love accomplishing i love mm. creating i love something new uh, you know so mm. what do you want to accomplish in your life what's the big thing the big thing is uh you know i I'm first and foremost, I'd love to say it's, you know, I, I'd say top two is showing people an easier path. I think most people are, 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 they're driving a hundred miles an hour and they don't know where to go. It's like, mm. even if they got a Ferrari engine, they don't have any GPS and it's like, nice. everybody's going fast. And most of the time they think it's going to be this dramatic, spectacular thing. And a lot of teams, it's the same thing that they could have learned from Dale Carnegie or Earl Nightingale mm. or Napoleon Hill or, or somebody, you know, it's just these simple core things that can make them slow down and achieve. And, and I think that I can, I think I have the ability to deliver a message in a way that it sticks. And that's what I've been blessed to do in real estate is it's not that I had found the only way to make money in real estate, but I'm the, I was the biggest real estate educator in the entire world. There was nobody even close to me. It was like it, second, second through 20th place didn't make up the volume <laughs> right. I did. Right. Right. And there was other guys that were great at education. I just think I found a way to deliver it. It's probably because of my dyslexia and my learning disabilities and mm -hmm. stuff. I found a way to give people recipes. So I would say the, a big fuel is is getting people these strategies in their hands so they could see there's a better way. Literally for me still, I fall back on my why and when I think of my kids and going backwards and being in control, I could push through anything. Nothing will stop me, a bad day. I don't know what it's like to be sick because my mind, I, I can program my brain to just power through because mm. I focus foundationally on this why. Right.